uh, about further extension okay so in last class how many random discrete random variable we had already seen and the corresponding discrete uh, probability distribution four first one and simplest one was bernoulli random variable and the correspondingly bernoulli distribution and the second one was binomial distribution and correspondingly binomial random variable and uh, uh, third one geometric random variables and correspondingly geometric distribution and fourth one pascal pascal was one kind of extension of geometric random variable geometric random variable is talking about number of trial till first success and pascal is talking about number of trial till kth success so that kind of scenario you observe that uh, and uh, in the process of computation of pascal distribution you had seen a joint probability first one was coming with respect to binomial distribution framework as second one what just probability of success in the x trial what you had so that you had already seen that and uh, throughout here in the derivation of uh, uh, probability mass function uh, we had seen the formula you can call it formula and if uh, you are willing to see the derivation in the function approach i had already discussed in the uh, definition of probability distribution also in the definition of probability mass function both in both cases i had already uh, explained if someone is saying that x is a discrete random variable x is a discrete random variable what does it mean x is a discrete random variable what does it mean range of the x omega x it should be a countable set it should be a countable set that we had already discussed that means you are able to write omega x in term of a single sequence so that uh, sequence you had already seen so here it is a discrete random variable when you say it is a discrete random variable definitely random variable is a map from omega to omega x okay and when you, till now you will just say it is a discrete random variable okay now it is a random variable but you directly can't say it is a discrete when it is a discrete when you are giving a, a specific pattern that countability pattern to omega x what does countability pattern the random numbers happens to be written in the single sequence x k we are writing in the form of sequence curly bracket is notation for sequence so we are able to write in term of x k where k belongs to natural number you can put it here k belongs to natural number that means x1 x2 x3 up to uh, it, it can go up to infinity it depends upon what is the uh, how many uh, uh, outcomes are there how those are defined so k belongs to natural number a subset of natural number so natural number we denote it by n and with extra line okay like this so this is the simply uh, this is a discrete random variable first uh, we call it this in short d r v discrete random variable okay other secondly we are defining probability distribution of discrete random variable that means uh, x is mapping uh, outcome that means random outcome of an experiment to discrete random numbers random numbers it is mapping to random numbers and those random numbers are discrete in nature those are not in continuous in nature that means we are putting those in term of sequence now once we are having random number what are the probabilities of those random numbers what is the probability of observing those random numbers so that uh, so there are various random number so correspondingly you will get various probabilities so each random number is having a probability so you are getting a distribution of probability so that's why you are saying that it is it is a probability distribution of uh, discrete random variable and that one is defined as uh, we say it probability mass function and it is defined as probability measure of the event x is observing value small x 
x is observing value a small x or you can say that x is realizing a value x a small x. Okay. Now, third thing that I had discussed in detail if uh, you have already defined uh, discrete random variable, you have already defined probability distribution of a discrete random variable as a probability mass function, then what you need to understand? You need to understand event. So, how we had understood event? So, this we call it probability mass function second term. In short, you can call it PMF capital P, capital M, capital F because it is a short form. So, we, everything we will write in capital form. You are free to go for short form, there is no any issue, but capital is much uh, easy one. Now, if uh, you talk about this one, uh, we told that it is a, it is an event. So, but we have seen event in term of omega, omega that uh, a small omega that may outcome of experiment. So, how this one is related with omega? So, you can say that uh, if you are saying that x is observing value a small x, so you can easily equivalently write that actually x is uh, you are looking for inverse image of a small x. A small x is in omega x and omega x is a subset of real numbers. So, there we have to observe B kind of say Borel set. We are observing Borel set kind of things. So, here uh, it is equivalent to say that we have to find inverse image of uh, a small x. That means, what are those omega which are mapped to a small x? We are looking for all those uh, omega which are mapped to random number x that we are looking for. So, it is equivalently we say that we are looking for all those omega which are mapped to x. So, the in set theoric way we call it, uh, it is a collection of all omega from the sample space capital omega which is mapped to x, a small x by the random variable capital, capital x. So, x of omega equal to a small x. Okay. So, this all these three things might be clear to everyone. Is it clear to everyone or not? Okay. Now, what we have to do here little bit of specification is that you can call it here x k we have written it. Okay. So, you can call in plus of in, in place of uh, x you can call it x a small x k you can call it a small x k, it will give better notation. So, you can replace here a small x k. So, you are talking an event that x is observing value a small x k. So, what is the pre image of a small x k? This one is the process of finding pre image. What is the pre image of a small x k? So, here you will say that it is a collection of all omega which are mapped to a small x k. Okay, and we are giving name to this one. This set we will call it A k. That means A k is a subset of omega, sample space omega, which are a, which is mapped to a small x k. So that are you getting meaning of this or not? So uh, I had already given picture of. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, partition in the previous lecture I had told that. So, all these things you can call it, it is part of recap till now what we have already studied recap. If you are willing to note down, better note down all these. This, when you are saying that uh, recap that means it is one case of uh, summarizing everything what you had already studied in previous lectures. So, you should note down all, better note down every in your notebook, note down, it might be helpful. So, here uh, what is this one, this set, this set is omega x, we call it omega x and x is a uh, discrete random variable that means uh, omega x is a discrete set or countable set, it is having element in sequential form. 
x k we are writing it. So, we got a sequence sequential pattern. So, you call it the proper well ordering property that means you can say that what is the first term, what is the first random number, what is the second random number, what is the third random number, what is the kth random number like that. You can easily term all those. So, this one is x kth random number and it will go like this. Okay. So, it will go like this. So, where x 1 will uh, what is the pre image of x 1? A 1. So, it would be call this one is pre image of x 1 that we call it A 1. What is A 1? It is you can say that x, it is a pre image of x 1. So, it is inverse image of x 1 you can say that inverse image of x 1. Okay. Likewise, what is pre image of x 2? You will call it a 2. Pre image of x 2, you call it this one is a 2, a 2. Okay. And like what is the pre image of uh, x k? It is a k. You will define it. This one is a k. So, what you observe? You observe a partition of the sample space omega based on discrete random variable. So, what is x k? x k you will say that it is inverse image of x a small x k. x a small x k is a random number. Okay. So, I think uh, discrete random variable might be clear to everyone. Okay. And here uh, uh, you are talking about if you are willing to compute probability of observing this random number, then you have to compute those probability with the help of probability of a k h, a k h with the help of probability of a k h that we had already seen. So, these all already we have already seen and apart from that we had seen that uh, Bernoulli distribution. So, how we denote Bernoulli distribution? This one is we read it seem similar or you can read it distributed, you can read it distributed, distributed by. It is a notation in probability in a, a geometry and other uh, mathematics segment, you can call it this one is similar, but in probability we call it distributed. It is x is here distributed by a uh, law that we that one is a Bernoulli here call it if it is a having a Bernoulli distribution then you will write it B E R and we will involve here probability of success small p. We had already discussed this we call it a notation of uh, Bernoulli distribution that means x is distributed in Bernoulli fashion. Then second we had already discussed uh, binomial. So, here there is single parameter p is coming, but when you are talking about bi binomial there, there are two parameter. First one is number of Bernoulli trial and second one is probability of success in a single Bernoulli trial. So, two parameter n and p will come there. So, here binomial is having two parameter. There anyone may say that have, uh, have you seen the difference between parameter and variable? Do you see here what are parameter or what are a variable? Have you seen the difference between parameter and variable? Anyone have realized what is the difference between parameter and variable or both are same or different? Any comment over that? Do you know what is parameter, what is variable? Here x the observation, each observation of x it is a value of a variable x is a capital X is a random variable. So, they varying nature it uh, value of x is varying. So, that one x is variable and I am saying p is parameter p also can vary now. So, if both x can vary p can vary what what are the difference between these two. That means, if 
if p varies means you are talking different different coin you are talking different different kind of coin but if x varies you are talking about you are taking a coin and x varies that means how many heads are coming there so so variation of x is associated with a single coin at a time a variation of p is associated with various various coins like that so variation of parameter is talking about system variation that means uh, you are changing the system from you are going from one system to another system variation of variable means you are in the same system it is dynamic in nature it is progressing it is uh, transitioning like that you are in the same system you are transitioning okay another example everyone might have heard or seen equation of line what is the equation of line what is the equation of line slope or intercept curve general equation of line ax plus by so i am saying that equation of line this one is equation of line in 2d not in 3d okay so equation of line in 2d ax plus by equal to c generally or you can bring c left side there is no need to so here how many variable are there how many variable are there variable how many variable are there two what are those x and y value of x we are taking along horizontal axis and value of y we are taking along vertical axis now tell me how many coefficients are there or how many parameter are there okay three another answer is it unique answer or it may vary anyone have different answer or you are little bit blinded by your teacher to see three variables no three parameter any other answer think think little bit one student had already taken that concept just when i ask what is the equation of line or what is line just think over that how many how many uh, parameter are there what three three he has already mentioned so three how many two what are those yeah nice so there are two parameter actually c you can normalize it c is zero then fine so there is no any issue if c is not zero normalize it so actually effectively there are two parameter are you getting meaning of this or not so effectively there are two parameter so how many uh, what are the those parameter you can call it a dash and b dash you can normalize it and you can write it a dash and b dash so after normalizing you are getting it a dash x that's way if you are willing to write equation of line how many condition you need how many condition you need either two point condition or slope intercept form or there are yeah these kind of thing two point form slope intercept form these kind of things two condition you need so conditions are actually coming with respect to fixing the parameter those two value of parameter b dash so actually two parameter are there a dash and b dash so if you are writing a line kind of thing actually it will match with number of variable it will match with number of variable so equation of line it would be something like this okay if you are fixing a and b that means a dash and b dash a b c and that means a dash and b dash you are getting a line okay and in this line the point is moving why we are changing the value of x and y with in the single line here in this line the parameter are fixed if coefficient are fixed parameter are fixed parameter are fixed 
if it, it is uh, these are fixed and you are changing the value of variable. So, that is where you are getting a moving point. Have you heard moving point in coordinate geometry? So, moving point in a locus. So, that you observe. So, if you are fixing the parameter, you are getting a moving point and you are in the same system. Like uh, once you have joined this institute, you are moving in that institute, you are progressing. If you are studying well, then you are advancing to higher semesters like that. So, this one is a system, but someone is not coping, uh, coping up with the situation here. So, that person will change the institute. So, that is the what is that is change of system. So, for that person different parameter uh, uh, will be there in that system uh, another institute. So, that kind of things are coming. So, uh, here if you are changing the varying, uh, varying the parameter you are changing the system. So, again in that system you will observe variable again variation would be there. So, again so there would be family of system. So, by varying parameter what you are getting it? Family of family of system, family of lines, family of something what, what is uh, a structure, mathematical structure. Likewise, if you vary P, you will get family of Bernoulli distribution. Like for P equal to 0.3, there is one Bernoulli distribution. For P equal to 0.5, there is another Bernoulli distribution. Likewise, family of Bernoulli distribution. Okay. Like why we are getting it? It is based on your coin structure. If your coin is unbiased, you will get P equal to 0.5. If coin is biased towards head, you will get P equal to 0 0.8, 0 0.9, something like that. Okay. If coin is biased towards tail, P value of P would be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 kind of things. Depends upon what kind of coin you are having. So, that means you are changing the coin, you are changing the parameter. You are changing the coin means you are changing the parameter. So, that likewise here n and p are parameter in binomial distribution. Why? But again, those are uh, changing the scenario of that binomial distribution. You are talking about uh, 3 toss, you are talking about 4 toss of a coin, uh, 4 to uh, 5 toss of another coin, like that. So, various things are you are getting, various options. And the value of x here it would be variable, it is varying. Are you getting meaning of this or not? And then you will raise a question here there are two parameter y single variable, y single variable x. Here it is not a we are saying it is a linear kind of thing, okay. It is a line, it is a linear relation, so that is where that relation is coming. Hyper uh, later we will call it hyper hyperplane relation. So, here that situation is if you come up with a linear function then you can talk about uh, number of parameter and number of variables both will match when linear relation is there. Here there is a relation apart from being a random variable variable there is a uh, here there is a apart from variable there is a relation. Here also you can call it uh, when you, someone is saying that uh, x here x and y are what determinacy in nature there is no randomness. If you call x and y are random in nature these are not deterministic then this small x becomes capital X, a small y becomes capital Y that then that time we will call this one is a random line, random. So, various situations are coming, so it depends upon. As when if there is a variable and that one is written in term of capital letter, you will call it, it is not a deterministic variable, what kind of variable? It is a random variable. So, random variable always denoted by capital letter. Okay, because it involves random numbers. Now, uh, various we had already discussed. The uh, I think next one uh, random variable is hypergeometric distribution. So it is very much simple kind of uh, distribution. That means uh, it is a uh, one kind of uh, uh, distributing n n people n object into two group. One group is containing n one, then an another group will contain n2, n2. So, what is the probability of case success or uh, what is the pro probability that a, 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 one group will contain exactly k element? 
red and uh, black ball kind of things you might have already seen that these are very simple kind of things that you can formulate so directly you, you can come up with uh, what is the probability of uh, uh, putting k, k selecting k element out of n element uh, putting those k element in two groups you are having n element from the n element you are taking k element at a time and you have to put those k element in two groups okay it is different from binomial see the see in binomial also what you are taking you are taking k out of n n choose k that is where it is coming now and k we are talking about success n minus k becomes failure here that situation is not here here already we are having two groups n1 one group contains n1 another group contains n minus n1 or n2 simply you can call it now you are taking k element and you try to put in first group and also in second group so uh, here so okay r sorry r element you are taking it you are taking r element at a random from out of n and you are putting k uh, k in first group and rest would be what r minus k r minus k at a time you are selecting r element you are putting k in first group r minus k in second group so it is different from binomial distribution and the probability is very much simple uh, that means here you have already opted uh, r element out of n so n choose r is coming total po possible uh, outcomes now in the total possible outcome k we are putting in n1 so that would be n1 choose k and rest we are putting out of r rest we are putting in n2 n2 is what n minus o n1 so n minus n1 choose r minus k so this one is hypergeometric kind of things so these are very simple kind of things there is no uh, much mathematics here and what other things also you can talk about how much element you can put in uh, one group so k must be less than equal to r and n1 you can't go beyond n1 so that's where one bound of k is already given here one bound of k and this is the protein distribution. this kind of distribution we call it uh, hypergeometric distribution okay so, so yeah poisson distribution we had already uh, discussed have you discussed poisson distribution uh, i think not Poisson. Poisson distribution is very much uh, uh, similar to binomial distribution and uh, only difference is that Poisson distribution is associated with some kind of interval. Okay. So one situation observe that you are suppose you are waiting for bus uh, near main gate. Tell me uh, how many bus you will get? And how in which way in which way whether you will get bus regularly what is the probability of success probability of success is getting a bus in the so what would what would be the value of p there if you are in the campus and you are willing to go back your hostel what is the probability of getting a bus just based on your experience tell me what what would be the probability of getting a bus here in, in the main zero no, I am not totally agree with you. Any other? Definitely zero. No bus. So how you people are managed to go there? What? How? How you are going there by some kind of teleportation or something like that? How you manage? To, huh? I, I have seen buses are there. In the morning, and the new buses are coming. Uh, don't uh, actually say like that. Buses are there. I have four or five buses, I think. Am I true or not? Buses are there. Don't uh, uh, go for that kind of thing. So, buses are there. So, again, I told that another thing time. I mentioned time interval. So, their time interval is very much uh, essential. If you are going now, right now, in order to get a bus, you want to get a, get a bus. So there you have to mention an interval, like uh, 
8 to 9, 9 to 10 or 5 to 6, 6 to 7 or 4 to 5 those kind of things So the time interval. So, when you are counting number of success or number of arrival or number of departure of something and there that one is associated with time interval. Why we are associating time interval? Because those are rare kind of things. Definitely I say that here getting bus it is not a very obvious kind of thing, it is a rare event. This one is out, it is not in the main road, this institute is not in the main road. So, getting bus regularly that one is not a obvious thing. So, it is a rare kind of event. So, probability of success would be a small, probability of getting a bus would be a small, it would be 0 0.5. So, if probability of getting bus is a small, that means you have to perform, how many Bernoulli trial you have to perform? A lot number of n would be large, n would be large. So, some suppose there is another situation, I have given you task to find uh, number of mistake in a book, number of uh, wrong word or uh, uncorrected or wrong word in a book, in, in an edited book what would be ch chances, what would be the probability of success? It would be very small. In edited book uh, that came through various revisions something like that. So, in a book uh, the probability of getting a wrong word, you have uh, misspelled word, it is very small. And there in order to find those words, how many trial you have to perform, that means how many pa pages you have to look you have to look for several pages. So, that means, that means n is large and p is very small. Another situation, if I am asking you uh, count number of call drop, call drop might be clear to everyone. Is it clear to everyone or not? Have you heard call drop? You are calling someone, it got disconnected. So, do you observe that call drop in a very frequent way or in a rare way, frequently or rare, rarely. So, again what, here there you are counting number of, here success is call drop, okay. So, call drop, your probability of a call drop is very small, probability of success is very small and in order if uh, success is, probability of success is very small, you have to perform uh, the number of trial a lot of number of trial you have to perform, n would be large. So, in this situation best way to come up with time interval, so everywhere you have to introduce time interval, it is not like that someone is saying that uh, just observe call drop, so you will start counting call drop, it will consume a lot of time. So, better uh, you based on some experience you will observe that call drop very, is very common in the morning time or in the mid term, uh, sorry mid time or in the evening something like that. So, you are coming with uh, interval, kind of interval from this time to that, that time something like that, okay. So, you are associating with when you are counting number of success and number of success happens, happens to be very uh, rare kind of things, there you introduce interval. So, those kind of uh, uh, probability model, uh, model can be done with the help of Poisson distribution. So, it is coming for actually you cannot apply their binomial distribution directly because probability of success is very small. If probability of success is moderate, you go with binomial distribution, there is no any issue. But probability of success is very small, then you have to come up with Poisson distribution. So, it is also you can say that limiting case of binomial distribution, you can say limiting case how I have taken it like that. Uh, this one is the first homework that you have to establish, it is a very much limit, limit problem. And uh, what you do? Uh, here this one is a what? A binomial distribution, everyone might be agreed with. This one is a binomial distribution, okay. Now, here we are taking a random variable where p is possibly very small and n is possibly very large. But product of n and p, it would be moderate. That we call it lambda, parameter lambda. We do not see. Uh, and time p we call it parameter, uh, parameter actually it would later we will come to know it is mean of the uh, n time p mean of the binomial random variable, 
later we will see mean average average of the binomial random variable that we will see it. So, if n is very large and p is very small here o or o or option is not there and option is there n is very large and p is very small you remember that lambda is fixed and lambda is equal to n times p if p is very small what would be n what is the relation between n and p reciprocal reciprocal relation n is inversely proportional to p or p is inversely proportional to n if p is very small means n is very large so that is where n word, word is coming so we are having a, a random variable x where distribution is defined as a limiting case of binomial distribution when n is approaching to infinity. If n is approaching to infinity, where p will approach? 0. It is not exactly 0, it will approach to 0. So, limiting case of binomial distribution when n is approaching to 0, when probability of success is very small, you have to perform a lot of trial, Bernoulli trial. So, n is approaching to infinity and if you solve this limiting uh, problem, uh, the limit of this one is coming lambda to the power x e to the power minus lambda uh, divided by factorial x where lambda is equal to n times p. This, uh, this one is your first homework, you have to find this relation and just submit your uh, a screenshot of that in uh, Google Classroom, just submit it, there is no issue. It is just, it is a very simple limiting problem. High, high, uh, plus 2 problem in calculus you might have already seen that. So, this one you have to find it. So, take a binomial di distribution, yes any doubt any question otherwise watch any of my previous lecture you will get derivation there or in book uh, in derivation would might be there otherwise, uh, but uh, uh, here uh, there would be weighted mark why if you are having a fresh attempt I will identify it and if you are just trying to copy from elsewhere definitely will come up with their mind, use your mind and solve it. Just you know that you know limiting how to find limit of a function, limit of a sequence, it is a limit of a sequence. How to find limit of a sequence? It is binomial term, uh, your binomial distribution is a sequence in term of n and you are taking limit n tends to infinity. Solve this limit and get this formula, it would be this formula, okay. And this uh, distribution, it is we call it Poisson distribution it is Poisson distribution. So, Poisson distribution is actually a limiting case of binomial distribution. Are you getting meaning of this or not? Poisson distribution is limiting case of binomial distribution when n is approaching to infinity and hence p will approach to 0, that p is very small. p infinity we cannot see it, okay. So, here I have already seen uh, given another approximation. So, you might have already seen approximation as well. So, in Taylor's theorem, have you heard uh, mean value theorem other kind of things? in calculus. So, it is just based on that. So, when you are finding derivative of a function, how you find uh, approximate derivative of a function? Derivative of function, how it is defined? By first uh, principle method. How we define derivative of a function uh, uh, f? That derivative of function at point x, how we, how we define? Anyone? It is a limit now, we say that limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h plus minus f of we are very much uh, comfortable with the right approach no? it is a right hand side derivative someone may, someone may define left hand side derivative as well so, this one is f of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, what does it talk about? It is the slope of second, second line and when you are making uh, h approach to 0, the second will become a tangent to the function. So, 
tangent to the function f dash x is talking about slope of the tangent to the function. Geometrically everyone might have already seen in book ok. If you are taking a function like this way ok do not have to go in that way. So, this one is limiting case ok. So, what in sense of approximation? So, it is when h is approaching to 0 we are suppose we are saying uh, uh, h is very small. So, how we will write it in approximation? I will write in approximation. So, we will say that f dash x is approximately equal to approximation we say that curly this one and equal approximately equal to what we will say that it is approximately equal to when h is very small. Uh, f dash x is very much uh, near to f of x plus h minus f of x. divide by h. If you say h is very small, have you seen this approximation or not? Have you seen this or not? If you do not see then play with uh, the plot of function, take simply this kind of function. So, if you suppose this point is x, where is f dash x? It is talking about come to this point draw a tangent this is a tangent line. So, f dash x is talking about slope of the tangent at point x slope of the tangent at point x it is talking about this is the tangent line ok and what is uh, talking about right hand side talking about slope of the second take a second this one is it is cutting the cutting the graph of function at 2 point cutting graph of function at 2. So, this is the second. So, it is the slope of this second ok. If here what you observe that this point is what, what is name of this point and what is name of this point? This point is x plus h are you getting meaning of this or not? This point is x plus h suppose you take h very small where where does that second line would be? It will be very near to tangent line. If you are uh, moving h towards uh, 0 that means x, uh, x of h will approach towards x and hence second line will move towards tangent. So, that is why you say that slope of the second and slope of the tangent would be approximately very close to each other when h is very small, when h is very small and that quantity you can write it when h is very small that you write it h is approximately equal to 0 that is it. In the same way we are saying that the binomial distribution is approximately equal to Poisson distribution when n is very large. Here we are taking limit in n tends to infinity, here we are in derivative we are taking limit h tends to 0. So, that is so when n is very large the binomial approximation uh, distribution is actually very near to Poisson distribution. So, Poisson distribution it is coming in term of exponential and there lambda is equal to n time p that so it is coming from ok. So, uh, here x is counting number of Bernoulli successes in a Bernoulli trial and n mentioned very large and p is very small n is very large and p is very uh, small and that is where we come up with time of int interval or space time of interval. We, uh, there are rare kind of events. So, we have to wait for that if someone is going for uh, uh, something in order to get rare event like uh, in order to catch a uh, what we, 
rabbit or something like that in a forest, instantly you, you will get rabbit, it is not possible, you have to wait for that, that one is rare. So again you have to perform many attempts, so you have to go interval wise, interval, you have to, so that attempt in order to reduce your thinking process, you have to convert into interval and wait for one hour, I should wait for one hour, then if we are not getting in one hour, next one hour, then next one hour like that. So that kind of situation, so interval, we are associating with uh, interval, okay. So one example we have taken, uh, here we will see the competition of uh, uh, probability of success uh, using binomial distribution and also using um, Bernoulli, uh, sorry, Poisson distribution. We will see how competition is uh, much easier in Poisson and uh, difficult in binomial. So here question is, you are performing 100 trial n is equal to 100 and probability of success is 0 0.01, very small probability. Then compute the probability of 5 success, k equal to 5, when n equal to 100, 100 trial you are performing. So using uh, binomial distribution, what would be n choose 100 choose 5, this one is 100 choose 5, what is this one? n choose k 100 choose 5 into p to the power 5, uh, p is point 0, 01. So, p to the power 5 into 1 minus p to the power n minus k that means 100 minus 5, 95 it is coming. And if you are competing, tell me how many competition are there? Are you holding uh, competition first time or have you uh, counted competition? How many competition are there? Competition means uh, it is uh, uh, computational complexity we can call it. We are counting number of time we have gone for addition and multiplication. Tell me, I will share this, uh, you do not need to take picture, I will share this. I always used to share this slide. So tell me how many multiplication and additions are there here? How many multiplication and addition are there here? Factorial n, you are talking about factorial n, factorial 100. How many multiplication are there? 100 multiplication? 1 into 2 into 3 into up to 100. That means 100 multiplication. Then how many multiplication here? 5. 100 plus 5. Then how many multiplication here? 95. That means total 200 till now. Then division is also multiplication. I have told you, a special case of multiplication. So 200 plus 1. Okay, 200 plus 1. Then here we are taking 0 0.01 to the power 5, how many multiplication are there? 5. So, 201 plus 5, 206 and how many here multiplications are there? 95. 95. So, 301 and subtraction is a special case of addition. 302 operation we have done or computation we have done in order to get the final result. That result is coming like this way. Okay. Same probability we will compute using Poisson, sorry, Poisson distribution. So here we have, first we have to compute lambda here. Lambda is what? It is equal to n times p, n times p. So 100 times 0 0.01, it is equal to 1. Now probability of 5 success, that x equal to 5, it would be e to the power minus lambda into lambda to the power lambda to the power x divided by factorial x. So here lambda equal to 1, x equal to 5, x or k, sometime I will take it k because it is an integer or x better take it. So it will e to the power minus 1, 1 to the power 5 would be 1 divided by factorial 5. Count, tell me how many computation are there, how many arithmetic operations are there. Here how many operations are there? Factorial 5, 5, five. One, by, 1 by 5 division that means 6 and multiplication is e to the power minus 1. What is the value of e? 2.7, 3 something like that, okay. So you have to invert, so there are 2 operations, so uh, 5, 6, uh, okay, 6, uh, 7, 8, 8 operations are there. 8 or 9 operations. 
So, here what is the computational complexity of uh, finding probability using Poisson distribution 7 or 8 ok. But here we had seen uh, 300 to something like that which one is uh, more a smart move Poisson not Poisson Poisson call it. So, it is it is a uh, having uh, a smaller uh, a smaller uh, computational complexity it is much faster to compute in computer or calculator. And if you try to see up to 3 decimal under approximation if you go a scientific figure something like that uh, or you try to approximate it. So, both probability are matching you can see that both probability up to four third decimal place both probability are same what you observe. So, which method you will go for the second when when probability of success is very small and hence n would be by default large and hence n ok by default. In that case you have to compute probability of success using Poisson distribution that is the uh, application of Poisson distribution ok. And these are the various uh, plot of Poisson distribution you can see like that uh, Poisson distribution different different here lambda lambda might be around 50 something like that you can see. So, one plot I used to provide ok. Any question till now? So, we have seen approximation of binomial distribution or limiting case of binomial distribution when n is approaching to infinity as a Poisson distribution. Now, another uh, thing we will get motivated from binomial distribution that one is multinomial distribution. So, we had already seen uh, generalization of uh, binomial coefficient to multinomial coefficient when multinomial coefficient uh, is coming when you are having more than two outcome possibility of more than two outcome in a single trial. If you are tossing a coin there would be two options. So, that is why it is falling in binomial category by two options two, two possible outcome in a single trial. But if you are uh, registering a course how many outcomes are there getting a a minus b b minus c c minus d d minus oh sorry d d after d there is f ok. So, various possibilities are there. So, it depends upon what kind of experiment you are taking it based on that. So, in this case if you are willing to model it will fall in the multinomial distribution category. So, it is generalization that means in a single trial if there are more than two outcome then you have to model it through multinomial distribution or that would be multinomial coefficient ok. So, binomial distribution can easily be generalized to uh, n repeated independent trials where each trial will have more than two options more than two outcome more than two options. So, which suppose we do not uh, those outcomes suppose there are r outcomes in a single trial there are r outcome ok. And we denote uh, those outcome E 1, E 2, E 3, E R these kind of things. And as if you are talking about uh, uh, tossing a coin uh, Bernoulli trial there are two outcomes. So, probability of success and probability of, probability of failure. So, probability of if probability of success is P then probability of failure would be 1 minus P. Th that means, in a single trial P plus 1 minus P equal to 1. But in a multinomial trial what you have to do? How many options you are having? How many outcomes are possible in a single trial? R. So, that there would be a probability vector, probability vector P1, P2, P3. P1 is for first outcome, P2 for second outcome and PR for Rth outcome and sum of those uh, probabilities would be equal to 1. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So, sum of those probability okay, so that is where it is given. P1 plus P2 plus P3 up to PR uh, it is equal to 1. So, it is related with a single trial any any trial you can take it. So, the result of n trial if you perform n trial then a outcome will have this kind of form like H3, H1, uh, E3, E1, E3. So, it is one kind of uh, uh, one kind of outcome in n trial we are talking about one kind of one kind of outcome ok. So, the probability that a, in n trial e 1 occurs 
k1 times k2 occurs k2 times k3 occurs k3 times er occurs kr times why we are talking about like that like even you are tossing a coin n times we are saying that e1 means success kind of things success occurs k times e2 is failure failure occurs how many times n minus k times but when we are having multinomial trial so there are various outcome in a single trial first kind of outcome occurs uh, k1 times second kind of outcome occurs k2 times and likewise uh, rth kind of outcome occurs uh, kr times so what would be the sum of those kr what would be sum of those ki's it would be equal to some value that call it x or you can call it uh, 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 what is the sum of this one so what are the possible value of k it is taking from 0 to n if you sum okay here sum this like uh, k plus n minus k what is the value in binomial you observe two kind of uh, outcome in a trial na? success and failure so success are k in number failure are n minus k in number what is value of k plus n minus k n likewise if you are having r outcome in a single trial you are performing n number of trial of those uh, uh, experiment then what would be k1 plus k2 plus k3 up to kr it is equal to n like k plus n minus k equal to n here also it is that one is case of binomial things it is case of multinomial things are you getting meaning of this or not it is generalization from binomial so you have to give little bit effort here binomial and if that is the situation what is the probability of uh, that uh, you are talking x is observing a small x what is the probability mass function what is the probability mass function you, you are saying it uh, here you, you are talking about uh, one kind of event this one is one kind of event okay this event if you are talking about this event so it may have k, k1 kind of uh, e1 k2 kind of k k2 times e2 like that and kr times er so the probability mass function you will compute it like n choose n choose k1 k2 of kr it will go like that so it is multinomial coefficient it is coming so multinomial coefficient in uh, counting principle we had already discussed so it is coming as a multinomial coefficient and uh, if you talk about uh, here so uh, p1 occurs k1 times so probability of uh, p1 uh, e1 occurs k1 times what is the probability of uh, getting e1 that one is p1 p1 to the power k1 p to the power k2 and like pr to the power kr so it is one kind of generalization of binomial just replace uh, k by uh, k1 and n minus k by k2 okay replace and generalize it for generalize it for uh, more than two outcome so you will get this kind of thing so remember these kind of things like p1 plus p2 plus p up to pr it is equal to 1 and k1 plus k2 up to k kr it is equal to uh, n so these things you have to understand all this okay so one example is that so here if you talk about uh, an example of uh, multinomial trial uh, take a dice so if you are uh, rolling a dice how many possible outcomes are there in a single trial six trial uh, six outcome would be there and each one is having probability 1 by 6 equally likely situation is there so if you are uh, a, there is a question involved with uh, rolling a dice and if you are willing to introduce a distribution there multinomial distribution will come there multi so question is coming that uh, so uh, here in a in rolling 12 dice n equal to 12 here n equal to 12 find the probability that uh, getting each face twice that means k1 equal to 2 k2 equal to 2 twice means each face twice that uh, face 1 is e1 Phase two, getting phase 2 is E2, getting, getting phase 6 is E6, okay. Uh, how many times E1 is coming? 2 times. Uh, E2 is coming? 2 times. And E6 is coming? 2 times. So, K1 
equal to 2, k o 2 equal to 2 and k 6 equal to 2, okay. And that is where you just substitute all these in the formula, you will get the corresponding probability, okay. So, it is part of multinomial distribution, okay. Now, the last one, uh, there are others as well, some are specific, last uh, uh, discrete distribution is uh, discrete uniform distribution, discrete uniform distribution. That means, you are taking a number between A and B and we say that it is distributed through uniform law that means equally likely that the probability of uh, occurrence of A1 equal to probability of occurrence of A2 equal to probability of occurrence of uh, B, okay. So how many numbers are there? Anyone can count? How many? If I am saying that uh, uh, we are taking numbers between A to B, tell me how many numbers would be there? How many numbers would be there? A and B both are very much uh, arbitrary nature. So, how many uh, number it is uh, containing? A to B, how many numbers are there? These are discrete number, not continuous, do not take uh, interval wise. So, how many number, numbers are there? B minus A plus 1, B minus A plus 1, simple formula. So, there are B minus A plus 1 numbers all are equally likely. So, all will have the same probability. What will be that probability? That means n equal to, what is n equal to here? Number of count equal to b minus a plus each one is having same probability. So, each element is having probability 1 by n simply 1 by n, equally likely. That means, you are uh, adding probability of A equal to probability of B equal to probability of like probability of B, okay. A1, okay, all these probability are equal. And sum of the probability you know that it is equal to 1. That means, probability of all are having same probability. So, you, how many times you are adding that probability? N time, no. So, probability of A would be 1 by N. If you take N right hand side, it would be 1 by n. So, that is where this distribution is given here. Uh, if x is uh, distributed uniformly, then what is the probability of mass function? The probability of x, it is uh, 1 by b minus a plus 1 when x is either of these a, a plus 1 up to b. If you are taking x outside from this list of numbers, the probability is 0. We are not bothering about that. So, that is where this distribution we call it. Uh, uniform discrete distribution. Here, all these are discrete number. So, we call it uniform distri discrete distribution. This is the last uh, discrete uh, distribution. So, one example, simple example we, we have taken. 10 ping pong balls are numbered from 1 to 10 and placed in a bag. One ping pong ball is removed at random from, at when, whenever someone is saying at random, that means you are talking about uniform law or equally likely law you are removing from the bag, find the probability that number of, you know, find the number on the drawn ping pong ball is uh, between 7 to 10. Find the probability that ball drawn are between 7 to 10. What is the probability? Between 7 to 10. What does it mean be between 7 to 10? Means 8, 9, 8 and 9. What is the probability of uh, 8? What is the probability of 8? 8, 1 by 10. 1 by 10. What is the probability of 9? So, what is the desired probability? 2 by 10. So, same thing is coming here, 2 by 10. Desired probability. So, when you say that number is between say, uh, 8, uh, 7 to 10, that means you are not including 7, also you are not including 10. So, a strict inequality is coming. So, probability of 8 plus probability of 9 and 2 by 10. This is the result, simple result, okay, uh, uniform distribution. Any question till now? Any question? We have already finished uh, uh, almost uh, all possible uh, important discrete random uh, variable or discrete distribution. We have already complete, uh, completed. Any question till now? Anyone is having? Okay. Next, we will discuss about derived distribution. What does it mean? That means, function of 
discrete random variable function of discrete random variable. So, it is just function of one variable calculus you have already gone through. So, it is based on that. So, the distribution of function of a discrete random variable we will call it derived discrete distribution. Derived discrete distribution derived it should be we will discuss. So, one example I had already discussed x and y kind of thing. So, we are having a random variable x then you are coming with a random variable y as a function of x. You write it here g of capital X. Remember that we are saying function in calculus you are used to of writing in a small letter a small y equal to g of a small x, but you are in probability whenever there is a variable things you make it capital. When you talk about a realization or a specific value observation of that value make it a small. A small letter denote a fixed value observe value ok observe value it is fixed value it is given to you it is not changing. But when you are talking about variable it would be in capital letter are you getting meaning of this ok. So, you are in probability so you have to take in that. So, we will define function of discrete random variable and we will try to compute probability distribution of that random variable. So, uh, if you are defining x is a given random variable and y happens to be function of x that function is we call it g. So, y equal to g of x it is a function. So, we can say that we can easily see that y is also a random variable y is also a random variable why because y will also assign a numeric value or a random number you can call it for each possible outcome of the random experiment. That means, ultimately what would be the domain of y it would be omega simple as this for random variable what is the necessary things it must satisfy every next condition upon sample space it will map every element of the sample space to some number real number those would be random number ok. So, every it must satisfy a random number if you are uh, having a function there you observe that uh, that function fails to map a at least one or two uh, possible outcome to some number then that would be no more a function and hence no more a random variable. So, that everyness condition is very much important. So, uh, again I am saying that how uh, y is defined it is defined as a composition function composition. So, y is g of x x is also a function g is also function g function of x. So, when you are writing g of x that means it is a composition function. So, y is a composition function of g and f and then if it is a composition function how it is acted upon the element of sample space it is acted upon through this way. Is it clear to everyone? Uh, so, uh, for every so everyness principle is already satisfied here for every omega every. So, we can say that y is a legitimate um, function over omega or you can say that y is a function. So, y is a function from omega to r and better call it here omega y the range of y would be omega y. Okay, we will denote it by o omega y. It is collection of random numbers. Okay, so it is a subset of real number. You can call it. So uh, it is all about that. We have to uh, derive what is the protein mass function of y or distribution of y. So to obtain uh, distribution of y, uh, we will go for observation y. So just talk about a uh, a single observation of y that we call it random variable y is observing value a small y that means a small y is a fixed number it is a fixed number. So, and y is a function of x. So, a small y will have pre images will have pre images. So, we have to compute the probability of those pre images those, those pre images a small x those pre it is not capital x y is a small so, we have to find all those x which are mapped to y which are mapped to y compute the probability of those x and sum it up in order to get probability of observing that a small y that is the process of computing probability of the 
uh, a specific observation of y. So, same thing I have written here. So, as per definition of discrete random variable, we know that how to compute probability mass function of a random variable. It is defined as small p of y is actually defined as probability that y is observing value of small y. Okay. And just keep attention here. Tell me what about a small y? Is it fixed or uh, varying nature? Is it fixed or varying nature? Is it fixed or varying? It is fixed. That we have already observed that. It is fixed. A small thing is fixed here. It is already observed to us. Okay. And G of capital X. Y is one, sorry. Y is what? Y is a random variable. Okay. Y is a random variable. So, it is a variable thing. So, how Y is defined? It is defined as G of capital X. So, we will put here G of capital X. We have written it like this way. Uh, we are not doing anything with y. Okay. Now, what we have to do further? So, uh, we will take it like uh, that what would be x? What kind of value x will observe? If y is observing value a small x, then what x will observe? Why we are saying that? Because y is a function of x. If y is observing a small y, then x will observe inverse image of, images of y. This one is inverse images of y. Remember that I have not mentioned that y is a g is a bijective function. You may raise a question that what is it is invertible, g is invertible. I have not mentioned that. Here it is talking about g inverse of y it is talking about here y is given to us. We are not talking about all possible y. We are talking about the given y. So, this quantity is talking about inverse image of y. That means this one is talking about uh, explicitly you can write it like that, that means it is collection of all x which are mapped to small y. It is collection of all x which are mapped to y. That means g of x equal to y. Inverse image of small y. So, little bit uh, exercise you have to do it like that. You have to change uh, perception, your perception what you had already seen in your uh, high school or plus 2. Little bit change is like that in probability, capital things did not variable, small thing observe or realization. Okay. So, here uh, g, g inverse of y it is not an inverse function, it is inverse image of y. You will read it inverse image of y. inverse image of y, inverse image. Okay. Inverse. Is it clear to everyone? Okay. So, what you do? When g, y is a function of x, that means we know the distribution of x. So, based on that we can uh, find the once we got the inverse image of y, sum the probability for all those inverse images. Sum the probability for all, all those in, inverse images. This will give probability of observing that a specific y. So, this is the way to compute derived distribution. One example I will take it, very simple example. And also uh, it have to satisfy, uh, if when, once you are saying that uh, uh, a small p of y, here it is a small p, a small p of y is a uh, probability mass function or probability di uh, distribution, it has to satisfy all these three properties. Easily you can say that it is satisfying, here you can see that p of x is taking value between 0 to 1. Then sum of these p x would be also between 0 to 1. But here remember that here we are in this summation, we are not taking summation with respect to all possible x. Are you taking summation with respect to all possible x? Not. We are taking summation with respect to only inverse images of a small y. That means all those x which are mapped to a small y under the scenario. Okay. So, it is not uh, definitely this sum would be not equal to 1. This sum would be not equal to 1. It would be less than 1. So, that is why this uh, probability of y is between 0 to 1. The probability of observing y is between. Second, that uh, uh, if you sum probability of y for all possible y, all possible y. What does it mean? It is talking about all possible x as well. 
if you are taking all possible y and y is a function of x that means it is also talking about everyness it is y is a function of x now that means g is engaging every element of x are you getting meaning of every everyness of a function or not so through everyness of function y is engaged if you are involving all y that means y is engaging all possible x so what is the summation with respect to all possible x of p of x as per normalizing property sum of uh, p of x equal to 1 when you are taking for all x normalizing so that's way property uh, uh, property sum of property of of p of y for all y it is equal to 1 so okay it is equal to 1 you are taking summation with respect to all x sum so it is that means it is uh, satisfying the derived distribution p of y it is satisfying normalizing condition the second condition third is just way of computing probability of an event third one third one is giving a tool to compute probability of an event third one okay so first two are important third one is the way to compute probability of a given event under the scenario okay so just actually it is already time so other thing we will cover in next 30 uh, next class and uh,